Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday once again, and you know every Tuesday we get to play a game. Today that game was Inside Job, designed by Cosmos Games and designer Tanner Simmons. And in this game we are playing as secret agents who are trying to get missions done, but there's a traitor among us, and they may be disrupting us as we're trying to do that. I'm here with my fellow barristers, Glenn and Gordon, and before we talk about our game, we're going to talk about how to play. Welcome to Inside Job, a game about secret agents completing missions and grabbing intel briefcase along the way. To start the game, each player is going to get a hand of cards that you're going to use throughout the entire game, a single intel briefcase to start, and a secret roll card that only you get to see. Most of the players at the table are going to get agent cards, which means that you're on the main team, you're on the majority, while exactly one player among you is going to be the insider, kind of the traitor of the group. And at the end of the game, either the agents all win together or the traitor wins alone. Now this is a trick-taking game, which means that as we're playing cards out onto the table, we have to follow the suit of the person who led each trick. And if you're not familiar with the basics of how trick-taking games work, that's okay. I'm going to put a link in the description to our run-through of how trick-taking games work. Before our leader starts a trick, they're going to look at the top two cards of the mission deck secretly to themselves, and they're going to choose one of these to be our mission for this trick. Now each mission card has two elements to it. The first is the requirement that we all have to make sure that we succeed at this mission. So this one for instance says the first and last cards played must be of the same suit. And if that's true by the end of the trick, then this mission succeeds. Each mission is also going to tell you what the trump suit is for this round. So in this case, the pink pens. And then we're off. Our leader is going to start by playing a card out of their hand. The green three, for example. And then everybody else at the table is going to play one card from their hand in clockwise order. As in any trick-taking game, players have to follow the suit of the lead card if they're able to. So we've got a green 11 from the next player, for instance. And if at the end of the trick, that mission is successful because the first and last cards played were of the same suit, that is one of the missions we need to win the game. The player who won the trick, so the green 11 in this case, gets one more intel briefcase to add to their supply, and they also get to lead the next trick. Now let's rewind for a second, because the insiders got some very interesting decisions to make along the way to try to disrupt these missions and win briefcases for themselves. They win if they collect enough briefcases before the required amount of missions has been successful for the agents to win. So in a scenario like this, the insider could try to run some interference and mess with the missions, even win the trick for themselves so they get to play the next one and collect a briefcase along the way. And it's worth noting that the insider does not have to follow the normal rules for following suit. So even though this player clearly has at least one, two, three greens in hand, and green was the lead suit, they could pretend to be out of greens and instead play a different card, say they played the pink 12 in this case, that's the trump suit so it automatically wins the trick here, and it also means that the first and last cards played were not of the same suit, so this mission fails and gets tossed out. So now this player has collected an extra briefcase, has won the suit, so they lead the next one, and they've failed a mission on us. That all looks pretty shady, so maybe that's a little bit too heavy-handed for the trader to be doing, but they have the power at their disposal, and if they're close enough to winning, taking that extra briefcase and taking the lead for the next trick might just be enough to push them over the top. So we're gonna play until either the trader gets the required number of briefcases and steals the win away from everybody else, or we get to the required number of successful missions for the agents to all win together. If neither of those happens before our hands run out, then we're going to take it to a vote. Everybody's going to cast one vote around the table to say who they think the traitor is, and if we can find the traitor among us, the agents win. If the traitor continues to be hidden among the crowd, they win. So we just finished our game. We played with three players this morning, and the game plays all the way from three up to five. It even has a, has a two-player variant. Uh, but we'd say after our three-player game that we actually kind of wished there were more players at the table with us as we were playing to sow a little bit more discord among more people, have more mysteries about who it was who was trying to betray us the entire time. And with more people, it becomes a little bit easier to swing into a sudden victory for that traitor. Glenn was our insider in our practice game and our real legitimate game just now, and it seemed like a real tough job. Like, as an agent both times, I felt like I was just enjoying myself and kind of trying to play around a traitor trying to win, but it seemed like the insider role was a real a real ask in a three-player game. If you've got a group that likes trick-taking games and likes a little bit of subterfuge and bluffing, this will actually be amazing with four or five players. Smart move. Okay. You're both the worst. <laughs> Stop it with your shows of goodwill. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have to I follow suit. That? First card played. You do must not have to follow have suit. Have a lower number than all it, other cards. 
you led yellow, I have to play yellow. Uh huh. Yeah, but you, as the insider, do not have to follow suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gosh darn it. So, the briefcases, the intel, which is how if you're the traitor, you get six of these, or four, depending on how many players you have, you win the game. It's also, you get one for every trick. Now, normally in trick taking games, if you've played many, you want to have the lead. Having the lead is great, especially if you have a good hand, because you can bleed people out of cards, and you can basically say, I'm picking the trick, so this is this is the mission we're on. I know I can win that, so I'm going to pick that, and I'm going to constantly bleed out and win the game. But with these, and you can wager and turn other cards into trump, it makes it a lot harder to lead and win, because anyone else can swoop in and say, oh, I'm going to play this card, I'm following suit, but my card's now trump, mm-hmm. I beat you, and I win the trick. And that really, really changes the way it plays from a traditional trick-taking game. And that I like. I like that a lot because it does make it harder as the as the insider in that game. It made it a lot harder for me because I had to, I wanted to constantly push it off to Gordon, who was to my left. I wanted him to lead, so I'd be the last person. But it's also tricky, too, because then if I do something weird and say, I'm going to play this, too, and make it trump and win... I'm giving myself away. So it's that, it's a hard balance. I, I enjoyed it, even though at times I was frustrated, but it was still trying to find my way out of that hole. I didn't do it, but I'm trying to think of different ways I could approach it differently the next time I play. Mm-hmm. Like playing to the vote at the end of the game instead of trying to win Intel. So there are a couple of things that I liked, uh, one of which Glenn uh, hit on with the, the mission cards. So we've seen the idea of missions in a trick-taking before. I'm thinking of the crew, which was fantastic, and you should definitely play that game. But what we have here is a different mission that you get to pick each round, and you're constrained. You get two choices. Sometimes those choices aren't very good. Sometimes you can use them to try to flush out who you think the insider is. You can say, all right, based on the seating position, they're going to have to play this way, and I can set it up such that I think, based on how they play, it's telling me something about them. Uh, But sometimes you're like, I got to play this and now I have to lead and my lead maybe makes it look like I'm being like, like I'm uh, like, like, like if I were the insider, I would do exactly (laughs) this. I'm not the insider, but this is still the best choice that I have. And uh, and I, I definitely think that there's that opportunity for allowing that to develop somewhere in the game. You don't know if it's going to happen. You don't know where it's going to happen. But you can cross your fingers and say, aha, someone's going to get tripped up here, and now they're suddenly going to look like, uh, they're going to look like the insider. And that's the playing to the vote at the end. I think it's this this sense of uncertainty. Like, I'm just going to set myself up such that someone's going to get in a bind, and then I'm going to be able to point the finger at them. And if I can social engineer that enough, then I can can come out ahead at the end. There were cases where, you know, I ended up with the lead, and I said, cool, I'm a good guy. I know I can safely have the lead, and I can start leading some tricks and taking some briefcases. But as a show of good faith, I still want to be able to win missions, that's our goal for winning the game, but I don't want to accrue too many briefcases too quickly, that's going to put a target on my back and make me look like I'm just trying to grab all the briefcases and I'm a bad guy. So then you make a play and you say, I will give away the lead to somebody else now, and I hope that it's the right somebody else and not the traitor who takes control, but that's the risk you have to take throughout the game is that as you're trying to spread the briefcases evenly, everybody's accruing a little bit more and a little bit more until you get to a place where it's easily swung into that trader, the insider, taking the game away because they got just close enough and then had a really big turn. Um, so a really interesting mechanics that I haven't seen in any trick-taking game before, balancing all these things while you try to stack up those missions, uh, made my brain happy. It plays in 20 or 30 minutes, so if you want a quick game that you could play, but that has some thought to it. Like Gordon said, it's really good. And that about does it for Inside Job. We had a really fun time with this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to hit that subscribe button and get to see our Tuesday videos every single week when we post them, that would be awesome. Leave a comment if you got a comment. Check out our online store. It's got awesome games like Inside Job and all the others. And we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.